All right, guys, our next guest is a fight veteran. He's had over 200 fights. He's a UFC veteran, and he's currently fighting a World Series of Fighting. He will be fighting Ozzy Dugalubgov at World Series of Fighting 20 on April 10th. He's none other than the young assassin, Melvin Gillard. Melvin, welcome to Submission Radio. How are you? I'm good. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. Now, Melvin, we were looking through your Twitter, and we saw that you managed to break the punching bag game. Is this part of your training for Ozzy by any chance? <laughs> No, nah, I was just some clowning around with some friends, man. <laughs> now, you're a few mo- months removed from your fight with Justin Gaethje. You had some issues making weight for that fight. For fans who don't know the story behind it, what caused those issues? Uh, just, I just missed time on my weight cut. Uh, a, lot, a lot of things went wrong, you know? I mean, I'm getting older, so my camps had to be longer. Um, you know, the weight cuts had to be a little bit longer, and then normally I didn't have to make anything that long, you know, everything was kind of, I did everything kind of last minute, short, but, um, you know, just, I don't know, my body just starting to change on me, so I, it, it took me a little bit longer than normal, that's all. You know, given everything that happened there, how important is it for you to get a big win at World Series of Fighting 20 in order to get back in the title picture? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure just one win will get me a title shot. I mean, you know, um, Baboon, he lost, to Gaethje this past weekend, which was a great fight, by the way. Um, and I think me and him are two of the top fighters in the in the division. Um, I don't see any of the other guys really competing for a title um, at that level. So I'm pretty sure after after I knock out Ozzy, I'm pretty sure I'll get another title shot. Yeah, certainly makes sense. Now, obviously, your first fight with Justin was very, very close. In a rematch, how do you think, what would you do different in a rematch, basically? You mentioned that your body wasn't feeling too good. A healthy Melvin Gillard against Justin Gaethje. How would the rematch differ from the uh, first fight? Uh, For me, I think the rematch would be me being more mobile and moving more like I normally do. Instead of just standing there waiting for him to come to me, I'll probably bring the fight to him a lot more. So I think the rematch will definitely be a lot different. Now, Melvin, I want to focus on positives, but I just want to quickly go back to that time period. You know, you and Justin, you engaged in a war of words, obviously former training partners, uh, you know, prior to the fight. Then he got the split decision victory after the intense buildup, you know, and the missing weight. How tough was that loss for you? I mean, to be honest, I still think I won that fight. Um, but when you miss weight and you don't finish a champion, of course, you know, it can go in his favor. The only thing I did wrong was not finish. Um, you know, it was some words said. I mean, I I still think I'm a better fighter. I'm a better athlete. You know what I mean? Um, I just I just wasn't in the best shape I, I should have been in. Um, I had trouble making weight. So all those things played a factor. You know, and then when I missed weight and I wasn't fighting for the title, I was already mentally beat anyway. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And on top of that, I let them take 50% of my purse. So... Technically speaking, I shouldn't even got in the ring. But on top of that, you know, after that, after I agreed to take the fight, you know, um, Ali, the the um, promoter for World Series, mm-hmm. he promised me to fight like a lot sooner. I was supposed to fight in February, and then he kind of reneged on that. So right now, you know, even going to this fight, you know, I look at it like some people will promise you things and and they they fall back on their word because. Technically speaking, I, I shouldn't even took that fight. I stepped over my agent and was like, no, I want to take the fight, you know, because if I had not fought Ali and them, they probably would have lost a lot of ratings that night because everybody tuned in to see me fight. And he kind of he kind of reneged on some of his promises, you know, and it's funny how they never answer their phone when I need to talk to them, but yet when they want me to do interviews and they want something from me, they want to try to force me to do it. So... You know, it's a lot of things with this company that I'm not happy about. And and I'm the type of person I'm always going to speak my mind, you know. And there's already other places that want that want to sign me. So I'm going to go in, in this fight next week. I'm going to fight my ass off. I'm going to win this fight impressively. So that way, um, you know, I have options. You know, I have choices. You know, because ultimately I'm going back to the UFC anyway. You know, so at the end of the day, it's no big deal. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them know how it feels when you fuck over Melvin Gillard and don't give him what he asked for after he after he swallows pride and takes a fight and take, you let them take 50% and I still fight for them. I still gave him a good show, you know, that last fight, even though I didn't make weight and fight for the title. 
But yet, the fact that Ali didn't didn't man up and, and follow his promise, um, you know, right now it's a little bit personal to me. Wow, so that that's an interesting um, perspective there. The fans didn't realize. Obviously, when you first were going into World Series of Fighting, you were very excited. There were a lot of promises made. Do you feel like the World Series of Fighting, like you mentioned, just hasn't come through on a lot of the promises that they made you when you were no, first they signing? Haven't. No, they they have they have not. They haven't come on. They haven't come through on their promises. But I mean, you know what? I don't care. You know, at the end of the day, anybody will say anything to get you to do something. But right now, for me, I'm not going to fit in their writing. I'm not doing it. You know what I mean? So, and that goes for sponsorships, anything. You know what I mean? Because for me, I I can care less to have any sponsors from this day forward. On a, on a, I mean, I've been in this game for 21 years. I was with the UFC for almost 10 years. And you know what? It's getting to the point where everybody wants a piece of something from the fighters, but yet nobody wants to deliver the, the fighters what they promised. You know, without us, the, the, the sponsors don't exist. The management don't exist. The, the fight teams and these coaches who want to make all this big money, they don't exist. I, I remember back when, guy, when, when coaches used to want to just coach you just because, you know? But now it's like everybody wants a percentage of something. But my, my, my biggest beef right now is the fact that World Series didn't deliver, you know? And right now, I, I guess they're worried about, oh, is he going to make weight? Well, right now I'm walking around at 165, and I've been at 165 for the last four weeks. So... I'm way ahead of my schedule on cutting weight. So if everybody's all so worried about me making weight, they don't have nothing to worry about on that part. You know what I mean? Now, me going out there and fight and give them a good fight, that depends on World Series. Because I'm not going to go out there and break my neck and give them a Melvin Gillard fight if they don't deliver on some of their promises. Wow, I mean, I guess the positive from there is that you're obviously, you know, set to make way, and that's great. You know, with you and World Series of Fighting, it's interesting because you're coming into your, obviously, third fight. If You haven't really been with the company very long, and it seems like you may already be out the door and going back to the UFC. Is there a possibility this can change? If you have a fight, and if, you know, you, you, you talk to them about things, and if they give you that title shot, do you think you'll stick around? I don't know, man, because, I mean, think about it. You know, Justin... I don't take nothing from Justin, but you know he, he's good, he's a good fighter. You know he's a champ right now. But if technically speaking, nobody even know who he is. I mean, I'm 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 around people right now still. You know, I'm getting ready to fight for World Series, and Justin fought last week. You know, against Babone, and technically people still don't know who. Some people still don't know that World Series exists. You know what I mean? And for me. You know, every time I turn on the TV and I watch the UFC fight, and I'm watching these guys that I compete against fight, and, you know, like Cowboy, everybody's still floating in the pack. You know, me personally, you know, I, I, that's the last thing I, was, I, I told everybody how there's A-list fighters, there's B-list fighters. You know, I still feel that way because I know for a fact I'm an A-list fighter. I know for a fact that Justin, if he went to the UFC, he'd probably have trouble being in the top five. You know what I mean? I'm not taking nothing from him in World Series. He's the best guy there is in World Series. But for me, you know, I miss weight. I had personal issues going on, so that prevented me from becoming champion. If I don't become World Series champion at this point, it really doesn't bother me. You know, to be honest, instead of being a World Series champion, I'd rather be in the UFC just fighting in the top ten and probably never becoming a UFC World Champion. If that was, if they, if I had that option. You know what I mean? If I had the option to be a World Series champion right now, or go back to the UFC and finish out my career with the UFC, whether I get a title shot or not, I would take that UFC fight, that UFC contract over a World Series thing. Yeah, certainly an interesting point. Now, Melvin, obviously the lightweight division in the UFC is really switched up as of late, have you sort of, you were such a big part of that division for a really long time. When you watch it, do you sort of miss being a part of it and miss being Hell a part yeah, of the I do, shows? Man. You know, like, sometimes I tear up watching that, man. And, you know, the sad part I think about was when, how they released me, you know, because technically I beat Ross Pearson. I'm watching Ross mm -hmm. Pearson fight guys, you know, and all of a sudden when I'm supposed to have the rematch with Ross, he had an a, a ACL or some kind of injury, but yet, he fought literally a month after I fought Michael Johnson, which didn't make sense for me to rematch against Michael Johnson. But at that point, and he, at that time, he needed me to fight in London because why? Well, I, I was me and Michael Johnson was the biggest name on that card. You know what I 
You know, it's, it's cool, man. Like, I'm just to the point where I'm not letting people use me anymore because at the end of the day, I'm always be a fan favorite. I, whether I win or lose, I always put on a great show. I always fight my ass off because that's who I am. I'm going to fight regardless. But I'm, I'm tired of these promotions and these promoters like trying to use me to say, oh, we need you to do this, but we're going to give you this. You know what? If they can't give it to me up front, then I don't want it. You know what I'm saying? So, on my way, out the door from World Series, most likely, you know, I might even make a pit stop to Bellator. Because right now, Bellator, from what I'm seeing, I hear they can get the guys. They're better than guys pretty good. I mean, I, I turned 32 yesterday. You know what I mean? My birthday was yesterday. And you know what? I still feel young. I still feel good. At this point right now, it's about them paying me for my talent. You know what I mean? I've always felt like I was underpaid for my talent. But ultimately, yes, I want to go back to the UFC. I want to fight the top 10, top 5 contenders. You know, maybe even fight for the title. And I'll give it another run. But this whole World Service thing, man, to be honest with you, after this fight, I'm probably going to be done with it anyway. Happy birthday for yesterday, Melvin. You know, I just want to talk about, obviously, the UFC. Your departure from the UFC came as a shock to many. You know, it was really only one loss. It's not like you're on a big streak. And Dana White suggested right. that you get a few wins outside the company. Obviously, you're not the champion at the moment, but have you spoken to Dana White about it? And have you sort of gauged it or, you know, anyone from the UFC and sort of said, hey, is there room for Melvin Gallard back in the lightweight division? No, not yet. I mean, me and Dana always had a great relationship, so... You know, when the time comes, you know, after I win those two or three fights that they want, you know, then I'll talk to them. But the way things have been going lately, you know, with me missing weight, you know, that was one of the biggest issues. You know, I even missed weight against Michael Johnson, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, looking back on just the little weight, the weight cutting issues that I had, you know, I had to change some things up. But I finally got that, you know, where I needed. So right now it's about just winning the fights that they want. Once I win the fights that I need to win, you know, and then, then I'll go to Damien and talk to him, you know. But in, in the meantime, I'm going to continue to pay attention because I've been paying very close attention to the UFC lightweight division, you know. Um, so for me, I'm just waiting for the right time and the right moment. You know, maybe they, they may even call me before I call them. Now, you do have a scheduled fight with, with World Series of fighting against Ozzy. He's not a very well-known fighter, but he is quite dangerous. What are some of the things that you've been working on in camp for your fight with Ozzy? Man, you know, at the end of the day, um, I I barely know anything about the kid. I watched him fight maybe once or twice. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, for me, it's about going in and doing my thing. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm at the point now in my career where I'm going to go in and fight my fight because everybody that's scheduled to fight me, no matter who they are, there's some kind of fear in their heart. You know, people people worry when they have to fight me because sometimes they don't know which Melvin Gillard is going to show up. They don't know which one which, which one's going to be there that day. Either way, I'm a dangerous fighter. I'm the one everybody's worried about. And I think right now, this kid's more worried about me than I'm worried about him, to be honest with you. I, I, I haven't really even lost any sleep over knowing that I'm going to fight this kid. Well, over the last few years, Melvin, you know, we've seen you switch camps up quite a bit between places like Jackson, Winkle Jones, and the Black Zillions. You know, I'm wondering, you know, why was that? And have you finally found your permanent home for training? I don't know, man. I mean, you know, for me, when I first started fighting, you know, I remember being the only guy in the gym and it's just had random guys come in and be bodies in the gym. Um, you know, this whole team thing. I mean, it's cool. I mean, I love being out there at the top team. Um, but for me, it's like I've always been like the Lone Ranger. I've always been that one guy that, you know, as long as I'm in shape, I'm good. You know, I already know how to fight. So uh, I'm not switching camps anymore if that's what you're asking. I mean, uh, I'm kind of done with that. I kind of regret leaving uh, Greg Jackson's camp at the time I did. You know, I was at the time I was just with Tim Shire. You know, Shire kind of talked me into coming to South Florida and, and it's kind of crazy because I came out with the Black Jillians. I had no success. And to be honest, Shadia and Rashad don't even speak anymore. You know what I mean? And we both live right here in Florida. Every, occasionally, I might see them at the at the Plum Cigar shop, you know, whenever me and my wife would go. But other than that, I don't really see Rashad. You know, he don't call me. I don't talk to him. And it kind of sucked because me and John actually had a pretty decent relationship. And I think I ruined that relationship by coming here with Rashad, ultimately. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just saying. 
because mm-hmm. now me and John don't speak anymore. So for me, I don't even care, though. Like, I, I care less if I, if I speak to any of them. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know, I was trying to be a bigger person and say, hey, man, you know, I looked at those dudes like big brothers, you know what I'm saying? But right now, you know, honestly, I would piss over the fields on fire. I'd probably set them on fire in my damn self. That's how much I care about them. Yeah, certainly. Interesting, Melvin. You know, you mentioned that basically you and Rashad don't really speak that much anymore. Were you guys really close at one point? What do you think? Why do you think Rashad doesn't call you as much as he used to? I don't know. I mean, you know, me personally, I think a lot of people let money change change them. You know, and you know, they start you know, I don't know, man. It's just they, they start they start hanging around certain people, they start hanging around people that other people that has money instead of you know, for me, whether I have money or don't have money, I'm always be around you know, the same people that I've always been around. You know, occasionally, sometimes you got to get rid of some people in your life. But I don't know. I don't know the real reason. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've always done things my way. I've always I've always had, like, a very strong personality. And, you know, sometimes people can't handle that because, for me, I'm, a, I'm an alpha. I'm a leader, you know, and I don't take shit from nobody. So I'm not one of those people that's going to follow you around and kiss your ass and want to want to stroke your nuts. You know, and, and be, I'm not I'm not that person. I'm not like a yes man. You know, and uh, uh, from what I see, a lot of people that be around Rashad, them, and John, and whoever else, you know, they just yes me, You know, they're around because it's because of them. When they're done and they're retired, or uh, something go wrong and they're not on top anymore, you they don't see who their real friends are because I know how that shit feels now. Because when I was in the UFC. And I was in the top five, and I wasn't even a champion. But for me, I'm 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 still more popular than most UFC title holders, you know. But when I was in the UFC and I was doing good and I was winning, everybody wanted to hang out around me, you know. Now, to be honest, it's just me and my wife ninety percent of the time. So right now, people are actually like, "What's your motivation? You know, what's going to get you back to the top? You know, right now, me working a side job, you know." Working, working a job and working around people taking orders, you know, that shit gets to me. You know what I mean? Because ultimately, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a superstar. I'm a fighter. And for me to have to humble myself and swallow my pride to take orders, you know, that says a lot about me as a man. But when I get back to the top, then I'm going to see everybody that wants to be my friend again. So that's how I look at Rashad. And I say, you know, for me, I look at it like everybody that's around him or around him right now because everything is good. But when things go bad and in life, things do get bad. You know, I don't wish any bad on them. I hope they finish their careers on top. But when they done with their career and they retire and they done with fighting, then they'll see if everybody's still around. Now, you just mentioned, Melvin, an interesting point that you've got a side job. Um, we can only guess it's because you're not in the UFC and you're in the World Series of Fighting. Can you shed some light on what your life is like now that you're in World Series of Fighting? What's this job that you have? So you're working while training oh, at, at the moment. Yeah, life sucks, man. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I, I make the best of it, but, you know, I, I have a little uh, sec- floor security job at a, at a strip club, you know, here in, here in South Florida. And, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm taking orders from bullshit people that aren't leaders. You know, the management mm-hmm. suck. The, the people that suck. The girls suck. Like, everything sucks <laughs> about it. But right now, it's the one thing I can do where, you know, it doesn't interfere with training. It doesn't interfere with – because me punching the clock, bro, is my style. You know what I mean? So it, it almost feel like, you know, I don't have to punch the clock, which I'm really not. You know what I mean? But ultimately, bro, just putting up with the bullshit, you know, with certain managements, you know, like, I mean, my boss, she's a chick. Her name's Liza. She's a fucking dumbass, you know, and I got other management there that some of them are cool, some of them are you know, just putting up with people's shit, you know. As a fighter, I can put up with shit because I'm my own boss, you know what I mean? And and the money, the the the, 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 different, the different levels of pay, you know, you're going to put up with something, you know what I mean? I don't mind putting up with it. Like when I was in the UFC, I didn't mind putting up with shit because shit, I was making good money. Now, it's like, shit, I got to work another job just to try to make it right now, you know what I mean? So that's another reason why I'm ready to part ways with World Series and get back to the UFC or perhaps go to Bellator.
Wow. You know, you speak like a man who's who's had a lot of experience. And as we're speaking to you right now, you know, you've definitely got a lot of, obviously, knowledge. You know, let's talk about sort of your runs in your career. You know, you're only 31, which is young for a fight. Well, actually, I think you may now be 32 because you had your birthday. However, right. you've had over 200 fights. How does the body feel after so many battles? And uh, do you know how many more years of Melvin Gallard we still have to look forward to? You know, has retirement crossed your mind at all? My body feels great, man. I mean... I don't have any any issues with my body. I don't have any any major injuries. I've ever hurt my knees. I think I've ever done was broken my head. So it's it's not like I've been in physical wars where I've been beaten up. You know what I mean? Like even even getting beat up and you know some guys having like head trauma or whatever you want to call it. I don't have that. Like I mean physically, I'm in great I'm in great shape. My body's good. I think I, I think I can fight till at least close to 45, but I don't want to fight that long anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I want to take the next five to seven years, and I want to make as much money as possible and invest my money into something. So that way I can't retire and, and say I don't want to fight anymore. You know what I mean? But ultimately, I, I feel great. I mean, you know, I'm not lying about that. Like, I really do feel good. I mean, I've always been, you know, in, in good shape. And I haven't taken a lot of damage in any fights. To be honest, still, nobody has really given me an ass whooping. You know, Gaethje, you know, he fought me hard. You know, the only thing he did different than a lot of people wasn't able to do was, you know, he kicked, he kicked the shit out of my legs. You know what I mean? But as far as just getting physically beat up, you know, nobody's actually physically beat me up. So I don't have any problems in that category right now. You know, I just want to fight. In the next couple of years, I just want to make some money. But... I want to finish my career in the UFC. I want to retire in the UFC. Wonderful, Melvin. Now, we're going to just wrap up the interview with a thing we call the Submission Radio Tap Out Round. It's just a bunch of sort of fun questions, and it's like a word association. Just tell us the first thing that pops into your mind. So I'm going to kick it off. Name two people that you love watching in MMA in 2015. Uh, Conor McGregor and um, Cowboy Cerrone. No arguments there. You know, you're 32 and you've had an insane amount of fights. What has been your favorite one thus far and why? You know, I, I don't have a favorite. You know, my um, for me, I just I just love fighting and I'm just blessed to be able to say I started fighting when I was 14 years old. So I, I don't I don't really have per se a favorite fight. Now, this has only just come to Australia recently, but give us your most watched show on Netflix, Melvin. Do you have one that you enjoy watching? Um, no, actually I don't. Um, but right now my favorite show that just ended that me and my wife watch is Empire. Mm, it's a great show. Uh, well, speaking yeah, of your yeah. wife, give us the secret to a successful marriage, Melvin. Man, I, you know, I don't think there's really a secret to success, man. Just being that you can love your, your, your spouse and be willing to accept what they are and who they are and being lenient and, and allowing them to do the things that they want to do whether it's right or wrong, um, I think that's what a successful marriage is about. You know, I'm blessed to have a perfect wife, you know, and I say that meaning, like, she has no criminal background. She's never been arrested. She, she has never even had thing, been fingerprinted. You know, mm. she she's she's um, she's um smart. She has college education she, that, that she's almost getting done with. So I'm blessed to have the wife that I have. You know, me, it's like, it's like she's everything good that I'm not. And she's like my yin and I'm yang. So for me, the only secret I can say is <laughs> they got to they gotta try to find the right one because after working at a strip club, so there aren't a lot of wives out there. There's a lot of women. <laughs> there's not a lot of wives. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Now, we saw on Twitter that you and your wife, like you mentioned, like to go out to dinner and have awesome dinners. What has been your, what's your favorite meal to order when you're out with your, with your wife? Uh, seafood, man. Um, crab, crawfish. I actually made some yesterday for my mm. birthday. Um, and I cooked it myself. So for us, man, we were big on seafood. We love seafood. Yeah, seafood's awesome. I recently found out I have a uh, soft shell crab allergy, which sucks. If you, Melvin, I'm curious. You know, you've had so many fights, and you say you love fighting. If you didn't take up fighting, what's another sport that you could have gone pro in? Oh man, I, man, I can say anything. Man, I can fight for the place. Oh, um, me personally, I think if I wasn't a fighter. I would have wanted to be maybe a soccer player or a rugby player. 
Yeah, no, that would have been awesome watching you in rugby. Finish the sentence for us, Melbourne. People don't know that I... Uh, people don't know that I'm a great guy, a uh, loving husband, and I'm very fun to be around. Well, speaking of fun, I hope you enjoy this next question. You know, the Submission Radio Marketing team, uh, they had to leave their families and work out of a metal bunker for two weeks to come up with these three options for potential nicknames. Uh, just to let you know, obviously, you know, you're the young assassin, but at some point that may not work as a nickname. So choose from the, f- the three options, Melvin, all right? Number one, the Viking Warrior. Uh, so you come out with a Viking helmet for the walkout. Number two, Melvin, the experienced assassin Gallard. This comes out with a leather jacket and a Matrix outfit. Well, number three, Melvin, the fight whisperer Gallard. This comes out with a horse that you ride out to the cage. Then you wave the horse and it gallops off into the back. But it also comes out for the post-fight celebration. Hey, got to have the celebration. Hey, no, I'll hey. take A. The hey? I'll take A. I'll be the Viking because I'm, I'm all about looting and plundering and taking what's mine. Johnny Very Drummer not. would love that. <laughs> Very nice. Now, finally, finally, Melvin, give us the official prediction. How do you plan on beating Ozzy at World Series of Fighting 20? Plan on knocking him out. That's as simple as that, man. I'm going there. I'm going to knock this kid out, and then I'm going to get my check, and I'm going to leave. Plain and simple. Well, we can't wait to see you uh, hopefully get that knockout. Guys, don't forget to follow Melvin on Twitter at young underscore assassin and watch him in action at World Series of Fighting 20 on April 10th. Uh, Foxwoods Resort and Casino, guys, in Connecticut. If you want more information, go to WSOF.com for more info. Melvin, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Thanks so much for chatting with us. All right, thank you. 